Hi, thanks for joining us at Kenton Baptist Church. My name is Pastor Steve Cochran. It's a joy to be with you. We are having a service in some very testing times at the moment. In fact, there was a man who stood up a few years ago, a couple of thousand years ago, who stood up to test Jesus. And he said to Jesus, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, you tell me, you know, you know the rules. Um, and he said, well, love the Lord my God with all my heart and mind and soul and spirit. And love my neighbour as well as, as much as I love myself. Jesus said to him, you're doing really well. You've got most of this sorted under your belt. And then the lawyer stands up to test Jesus and he says, yeah, but who is my neighbour? And that's a question that defines, for you and me, our relationships. It's one that Jesus says, we need to go a little deeper here. It's more than just an emotional feeling. This is one that's going to require us to practice what we preach. And Jesus tells the account, the parable of the Good Samaritan. While journeying along a well-known road with dangers almost at every turn, a man encounters robbers. Whilst on that journey, he's robbed of absolutely everything. He's beaten within an inch of his life and he's left for dead. He has been, he's had everything taken away from him. You may feel like you've been in a place like that where you've had everything taken away from you. And then Jesus brings into the story a couple of workers. If we looked in modern day time, that'd be perhaps the church minister, maybe even one of the, the leaders of the church. And then a quite an undesirable character too. Surely, if anyone could show the love of God, it would be these two people who work for the church. But the very people we assume would go and help the injured man are the very ones who actually cross over to the other side of the street and pass by, showing absolutely no love and no compassion at all. Then the one who has the least reason to show compassion is introduced to us, the Samaritan. The Samaritan enters the story and you can almost hear the crowd, a sharp intake of breath as they're listening to Jesus' parable. Their eyes begin to scrutinise Jesus' face. How on earth is this story going to unfold now? Because there's a mutual dislike between the Samaritans and the Jews. The one who has every justification to walk on the other side of the road and leave this injured man alone is actually the one who walks to him. You see, the Good Samaritan doesn't look at the man's background. He doesn't look at what's in it for me. He doesn't look at the man's gender, his race or religion. He sees someone in need, someone who has a need, and someone who can't help themselves. The Samaritan is the one who shows and demonstrates compassion for the injured man, sympathy, pity. He stops and he addresses the man's immediate needs and then goes out of his way to take him to a place where he can find rest and recover. He stays with him the next two days and then pulls out two coins. That's the equivalent of two days' wages and promises to pay the innkeeper. Here's the money to, to for our stay, but if you incur any other costs, I personally will reimburse you. What a picture of compassion. What a picture. Jesus draws a line between those who know what to do and do nothing and those who should do and do everything. So where do we see ourselves in this picture? Are we someone in need? Would we cross over to the other side of the road and just leave them to it? Or would we be moved with compassion? The Greek word in the Bible here is, is a word that sounds like splanxinomai. It's an incredible word. And it means a tummy-turning, gut-wrenching emotion as we try and imagine how we would feel if we placed ourselves in that person's situation in their moment of loneliness, in their moment of isolation. I wonder how you and I feel today.
in this 21st century with this coronavirus going on all around us. Maybe you're a neighbour in need. Or maybe you're someone who wants to help a neighbour who has a need. We can offer help in a variety of ways. We could go and do some shopping. We could offer to get a prescription. We could maybe pay a bill for a neighbour. We could talk to them from the end of their driveway. We could even Skype them or Zoom or FaceTime them on, on their mobile phone or their tablet. And we could do what Jesus did. We can offer to come back. That's a big one when somebody's lonely, when somebody's feeling isolated, when somebody doesn't know who to turn to, to offer to come back to them. There's another way of interpreting this passage. Along the road of life, we've all fallen into sin. And Satan attacks us with the intent of robbing our relationship from God. The lawyer could stand for mankind without any true understanding of God in this world. The priest is religion in apostasy. In the Levite, legalism that instills prejudice into the hearts of believers. The Samaritan, that's Jesus, who provides the way back to spiritual health and well-being. For me, this is a parable that Jesus uses for us to understand who our neighbour is. It's also an opportunity for us to examine how we can show the love of God through our day-to-day -day actions and our attitudes. We have a beautiful picture here of Jesus promising to come back. So for me, the big question is, who is my neighbour? In this 21st century, with all this coronavirus going on, who's my neighbour? Who's your neighbour? Maybe it's the person who lives next door. Maybe it's someone who lives on the same floor in your block. Maybe it's somebody you used to work with. Maybe it's family. Maybe it's friends. Friends, we all have needs today. There will be many opportunities for us over the coming weeks and months to reach out and offer help. Maybe you need help today. Maybe you're an isolated or lonely neighbour and you need help. I'd encourage you to take help the moment somebody offers you their hand. So friends, keep safe. Stay focused on Father's word. Stay well. Do everything the government are asking us to do with our hand washing and our social distancing. And let's do what we can do to be a good neighbour. It's been wonderful sharing with you. And I really do look forward to sharing with you again as we approach Easter. Stay safe. Stay well. Stay focused. Bye bye for now.